So far, we've seen how one can integrate Firebase in an Android application. Let's start to see the various features that it provides, starting with Firestore, which is essentially a database that Firebase provides. I've created a sample application with a sample form that takes input from the user and on clicking Submit, stores this information in Firestore. Every new submit will essentially create a document under a collection called Users. Now you may ask, what are documents and collections? If you're familiar with SQL, a document would be a row in a table and the collection would be the table itself. A collection is essentially a collection of documents. In our case, the collection would be called Users and each document under it would contain information about one particular user. Let's get started with the code. First, let's add the dependency for Firestore in the app Gradle file. Get the latest version from the Firebase website. Let's look at the layout of the only activity we have. It's pretty straightforward. We have three edit texts to input the name, email, and the phone number of the user. We also have a radio group with two radio buttons to get the gender, and also a button that submits the form. Now, we have to create a model. A model is basically the structure of every user document that we are going to be storing under the user's collection. Let's name the class user. Every field that you want in the document will be a variable declared here. We have four fields, three of which are strings, name, email, and gender. Let's store the fourth variable, the phone number, as an integer. Now that we have declared the variables, let's create a constructor which will help in creating objects for the class. Alt plus insert keys will give you a menu of what you want to insert. Select constructor, select all the variables and click OK. As you can see, the constructor is created with arguments as the variables that we had selected. For Firebase, it's also important to create an empty constructor. This time, click on select none while selecting the variables and creating the constructor. Now, we need getters and setters for all the variables that we just created. This can also be done easily using the Alt plus Insert shortcut. Select Getters and Setters in the menu, select all the variables and click Enter. That is it, the model is ready. Now let's move back to the activity. First, I'm going to declare all the variables for all the views that I have in the layout file of the activity. I have a function called initialize views where I initialize all the variables that we just declared. Let's declare an object called DB that belongs to the Firebase Firestore class. I'm going to initialize it with Firebase Firestore dot get instance method. This DB object is used to access the documents and collections present in our Firebase. Now, when the user clicks submit, we need to get all the data that the user has entered and upload it. I've collected all the data and stored it in strings and an integer. I've created an object of the user model that we just created and passed in all the values in the correct order to its constructor. Before doing this, you should ideally check for any validation. Check if none of the values are empty and any other validation that you might have. Intimate the user to correct the input before proceeding. After the validation is done, I'm creating the object and passing it to a function that takes care of the upload of the data. In this function, I'm saying db.collectionUsers.addUser user as the object that we just created and passed to this function, dot add on success listener. In the overridden method on success, you can provide the code that you want to execute if the document is successfully written. Similarly, in the on failure listener, add the code that needs to be executed when the document wasn't written to Firestore for some reason. In both the cases, I have just shown a toast message saying the relevant message. That's about it. Let's try it out. I'm running the app, entering the information and clicking submit. It shows a message saying it was successful. Let's go to the database and see how it looks there. As you can see, a new collection was created named users. And under that, we have one document which contains all the information that we entered. Now, if you see carefully, this document is named with a random key. This happened because we used the dot add function. If we want to use a key of our choice, we need to use the dot document function and pass in the name of the document that we want to set. After that, we need to call the dot set function to which we pass in the custom object. 
I'm going to name the document as the phone number of the user. Now, when I run the newly written code and click submit, you can see the name of the document being set as the phone number that we entered. The name that I'm referring to is the unique identifier of the document. If you try creating another document with the same name, it will simply reset the data of the document that already exists. It's nice to note that you can have collections under documents as well. We'll see how that can be of use later. Now that we have seen how to add documents and collections, we'll next need to retrieve these documents and display it to the user. We'll see how we can do that in the next video. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Do like and subscribe for more on point videos just like this one.